بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأسابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Privacy in Deen is very important and there are certain matters which needs to be kept private part of that is the awra al-mar'atu awratun wa innaha idha kharajat min baytiha a female is an awra she needs to be covered she needs to be concealed when she leaves the house istashrafaha shaytan shaytan tries to entice her seduce her to utilize her for the purpose which he wants to enslave humanity and take them to Jahannam. وَإِنَّهَا لَا تَكُونُ أَقْرَبَ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْهَا فِي قَعْرِ بَيْتِهَا The place where she is closest, where she is most beloved to Allah Jalla Jalaluhu is her house. Even in ibadat we are told خَيْرُ مَسَاجِنِ النِّسَا قَعْرُ بُيُوتِهِنَّ The best Masjid is the depth of their homes. In أحب الصلاة المرأة إلى الله في أشد مكان في بيتها ظلمة. The most beloved place for a female to perform her salat in the eyes of Allah is where there is the darkest spot, meaning the place where she is more invisible. This is with regards to her fulfilling the shara'it of covering her body according to the requirements of salah. On top of that, by her doing a good deed, where in salah, where she is concentrating, where she is not looking outside, where she is not gazing at anybody, but her gazes and her focus is on Allah. In the most important ibadat on earth for a believer, a female is told to complete and perform her salah in the most invisible place of the house. Salatul mar'ati fi baytiha afdalu min salatiha fi hujratiha. Wa salatuha fi mikhda'iha afdalu min salatiha fi baytiha. The deepest crevices part of her room is better than her reading anywhere else in the room. And the deepest part of her house is better than reading anywhere else in the house. The ulama have said, Ibn Khuzayma and the ulama have said, bi anna salataha hiya fi dariha afdal min salatiha fi al-masjid. It is even more virtuous for a female to read salah at home than in the masjid. Wa in kana masjid Makkah aw al-Madina. Even if that masjid is Makkah to Al-Mukarrama, O Medina to Al-Munawwara, O Bayt Al-Maqdis. The virtue of a woman reading. And then the scholars mention, وَقَدْ سَرَّهَا النَّبِي بِذَلِكَ فِي حَدِيثِ أُمِّ حُمَيْدِ The riwayat which you will do it now, where the, the emphasis is explained that a lot of steps to the masjid for men are virtuous, but the least steps to the masjid for a woman is virtuous. And she will decrease her rewards if she goes to the masjid. What was the riwayat of Umm Humaid? This was the wife of Abu Humaid as Sa'idi radiallahu an, that once she came to Nabi alayhi salam said, Ya Rasulullah, inni uhibbu salat ma'aka. A Sahabiya, 1400 years ago, in the most beloved Bukha, Masjid al-Nabawi, Medina al-Munawwara, most beloved places on earth, telling the most beloved of Allah, and the best after Anbiya, Sahaba, this is the conversation. O oh, Nabi of Allah, I would prefer to read and perform Salat with you. What Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam replied, قَدْ عَلِمْتُ أَنَّكِ تُحِبِّينَ الصَّلَاةِ مَعِي I know that salat with me is most beloved, but remember, this is the rule of Allah, this is the constitution of Allah, وَصَلَاتُكِ فِي بَيْتِكِ خَيْرٌ مِّن صَلَاتِكِ فِي هُجْرَتِكِ وَصَلَاتُكِ فِي هُجْرَتِكِ خَيْرٌ مِّن صَلَاتِكِ فِي دَارِكِ 
find the deepest part of your house not even in your room anywhere but the deepest darkest most invisible spot in your room not any room choose a room identify a place that is more beloved to Allah it is more beloved to me more beloved means salatiki fi masjidi qawmiki even more better then you reading Salat in your masjid, in your locality is what I encourage and more was Salatuki fi masjidi qawmiki khayrun min Salatiki fi masjidi more better than reading Salat in my masjid so what does Sahabia did? she didn't make ishkal, she didn't object when we hear the words of Allah and His Rasul either we have the mizaj and the mindset of Samina wa Atana. This is the demand, this is the command, this is the requirement of Sharia. I will comply with no doubt, no objection, no question. Not Samina wa Asaina. We heard it, mashallah. Maybe there's an interpretation, maybe there's a loophole. You are too hard, you are too strict in this narrative. Na'uzu billah. When a person, when ulama explain the Masail of Deen. And they explain the awamir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no motive. There is no benefit for them. They are explaining the rules of Allah and His Rasul. So when we hear it, we need to comply. We, we don't need to make statements. There is doubt. There is khatra. Our iman is at risk when we object on what Allah and His Rasul have said, we are at a very vulnerable position. So we have to be very vigilant. We have to be very, very cautious when we use certain words. What the Sabia did? فَأَمَرَتْ فَبُنِيَ مَسْجِدٌ فِي أَقْصَى شَيْءٍ مِّن بَيْتِهَا أَوْ أَذْلَمِهِ She gave instructions for a musalla, a place of salat, to be made in the deepest crevice of a house. This is a Sahabiya in the company of Sahaba in that era and that amount of precaution Nabi salam highlighted when you are performing Salah which is the greatest command of Allah the first thing to be questioned in a day of Qiyamah and we find every other excuse to justify every wrong to leave the house. So the whole of Quran and Hadith was not needed to keep the women in their homes preserved and protection. Remember, the Wamir of Allah is for our protection and our preservation. We hear the entire Quran and it doesn't keep us in our houses. It keeps us out of our houses. وَكَانَتْ تُصَلِّ فِي حَتَّى لَقِيَةِ اللَّهِ And that was a routine. Till she departed from this world, she read Salah only at home. إِنَّ صَلَاتَهُنَّ فِي بُيُوتِهِنَّ أَفْضَلُ لَهُنَّ This words of Nabi is telling us that even Ibadah is virtuous for a woman, a female in her house, not only in her house, in the darkest part of our house. What's, what's the situation of the woman who, who leave? Alama Dimyati has mentioned he passed away in 705 Hijri. He said, what is your thoughts for those women who leave? Mutazayyena, they are beautified, mutabakhara, they are filled with itar and perfume. So de de decorating themselves to entice men. Some women dress up because they want men to look at them, they want men to follow them, they want to turn heads. So that's a type of a jadu, it's type of witchcraft and black magic. Like you have a wand and you need heads to move. Your appearance in your dress, which is contravening Sharia, it's like a black magic and she's put on perfume and she's exposed her body Labisa ahsana thiyabiha and she's dressed with the best of clothing Aisha radiallahu anha 
لو علم النبي ما أحدث النساء بعده if نبي عليه السلام knew what the women did after him لا منعهن الخروج إلى المسجد نبي عليه السلام would have forbidden that no woman could ever go to the masjid on the statement of Aisha رضي الله عنها Alamad Dimiyati has mentioned this words of Aisha رضي الله عنها is with regards to the Sahabiyat and the women of خير القرون فما ظنك لو رأت نساء زماننا هذا if Aisha رضي الله عنها seen the women of my time this was 705 Hijri 700 plus years ago and he's saying what would she have said we are saying what would she have said if the women of this era was seen what 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 condition would have been uh, the, the the state of the sabia if nabi alayhi salatu was salam was alive what kayfiyat would have gone through him waqarna fi buyutikunna do not do not leave your houses for no reason unnecessarily if you have to live within the constraints and the requirements of sharia nobody's saying don't do business nobody's saying don't be educated and primarily education is for deen and tertiary education also based on need and necessity and if anything has to be done if it is done with regards to the law of Allah and his Rasul then nobody's got a problem nobody has got a problem the issue is when we contravene we compromise the laws of Allah and Quran is clear وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ دَبَرُّ جَالْجَاهِلِيَّةِ الْأُولَى the former times of ignorance where you display and you dazzle and you want to bewilder people so Mujahid says women used to go out in front of men where they should try to, 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 to display their beauty this was the jahiliya where a female goes in front of a male to, to entice him nowadays there are specific parlors and places where women display themselves Patada is also mentioned when they go out of their homes walking shamelessly without any shame and in a flirtatious manner Allah is forbidden that likewise Muqadil has mentioned Tabarruj is when a woman displays her earrings her necklace means she's completely clothed but any form of beautification and we did the, the, the face is part of Satan so remember the shayateen shaitan and nisa wa habailu shaitan they are the snares they are the traps so do i want to be a instrument for battle do i want to be an instrument a tool for shaitan or instrument for allah and his rasul for good do to 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 to, to fill the earth for, for chastity to fill the earth so the wives the daughters the mothers they are all amanat and trust our husbands, our sons, our brothers are trusts. We need to preserve and protect. When, 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 when you eat from the forbidden apple, you lose your modesty. You lose Jannah, Apple, iPhone. All of these instruments are there to, to modernize our thinking, to indoctrinate us what a thought process where we think so, we are oppressed now the billah. People will say, my parents are very strict. Are you very too loose? Are you too loose? They say very rigid, uh, uh, very hard. No, you're too soft. You're looking for loopholes. Nazia, a student from Bradford. What are words? I'm going to quote verbatim. At home, we constantly subjected to tyrannical, ty tyrannical parenting and hampered by endless rules which dictate our every move. University is the first and only chance a girl gets to lead her life 
exactly the way she wants it exactly this is following your khayish following your desires is that freedom is that what we've been sent the people of iman another muslim girl from london says kinza these are words my life at university involved clubbing drinking dating most of the things i got involved were pursued out of curiosity you don't for one second think about marriage you just go wild for a bit without wondering who's judging you the drinking is part of the experience and these days you have to dress just to fit in rather than to stand out again a mindset of doing what you want to this is our freedom i'm waiting for 18 i'm waiting to get to university i'm waiting to to to, to run my own life and do as i please now the billah there's another wave where people feel that uh islam is, shouldn't be so strict let's leave the fall of islam So we have many people who have become murtad. Another Muslim girl says, "I only chose to study medicine because the course is longer. I wanted to be away from home for longer." What a mindset to study at university for a longer period so you could break every command of allah the parents will be responsible the brothers will be responsible each one of you are shepherds and we will be questioned about that we find reasons justified find whatever reason khadija radiyallahu anha did business we need to do business no problem but what business she did who she sent who she hired did she compromise before islam when there was no islam There was haya. After Islam, there was no food in the house. See the sacrifices they gave. Did she abandon her business? Abandon all forms of 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 acquiring wealth for the Deen of Allah. So Deen was priority. My dunya can suffer. My Deen can never suffer. Yeah, dunya can can progress. We can we can we can acquire wealth. but our deen must suffer all the time so that's 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 mindset mindset fattaqu dunya wa taqu nisa shaitan will use women as a tool now as a female we have to introspect which part of the spectrum do i fall naqim is mentioned inna asla ad-din al-ghayra this ghayra this possessiveness Allah has given me this body to trust my daughter, my wife. Malla ghayrat Allahu la din Allahu. Whoever doesn't have ghayr, they have no din. For ghayrat, ghayrat is such a constituent. It will protect the heart. It will protect the body organs. It will uh, uh, dispel evil, harms, nuksan. And a person Ibn Qayyim is mentioned who doesn't have ghayra to me to the qalb it will kill the heart it will kill the body organs and there will be nothing left of this person like when a person is ill and he needs strength to fight the sickness but when you don't have strength and you have don't have those ingredients in your body to fight the disease you'll die ghayrat is fighting the disease haya fighting the disease uh, what is haya mulal qari has mentioned alla yaraka maulaka haythu nahaka my allah doesn't see me doing that which he has forbidden i'm i have this haya my allah shouldn't see me la khair fi man la yughar ali ran say person who doesn't have ghayrat there's no goodness in that person The cases are in front of us daily. Do we do want to become another statistic? Do we want our wives, our daughters, our generations to become just a statistic? Or we are kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. 
We set a standard for Haq. We show humanity what qualities the people of Iman have. The cases are in front of us. Six-year-old Muslim girl loses her virginity to her 12-year-old brother. Parents go out, leave them alone. The 12-year-old son has a cell phone. He's been watching pornography. He experiments with his own sister. These are real life cases. A husband leaves his wife and goes out in Jamaat. And the father-in-law rapes his daughter-in-law, has an affair with her. A brother allows his brother to come stay in his home because he doesn't have a place to stay. And after some tests, many years later, by mistake, he finds out his children are not his children. It's his brother's kids. Girls at university, most of them are not virgins. So these are lessons we need to take. It is important. You are something which is valuable and a valuable thing is protected. al awra the aura is called aura in Arabic. Al khalal wal aib fi shay. A flaw in something is called a aura. Why? Because there's a possibility of breach, violation, breaching this privacy. In Sharia, also it is connected to that. In 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 uh, in war, they should say that the aura is that which the enemy can can breach and violate, they can invade you. Thus, invasion and violation is very important. We need to make sure that we don't fall prey to the plotting of shaitan, nafs and the environment and we become the tools of haq and not batil. Allah give us tawfiq of making amal.